B, surgery to resect the tumor. 5.8 centimeters is past the surgical guidelines. We do it at 4.6. Tumors grow, they don't shrink. This one does. 95% ethanol. This may sound odd, and alcohol is what put the tumor there in the first place, but percutaneous ethanol was the first injection treatment for hepatocellular carcinoma, which is what this is presumed to be, although technically we still have no idea. I'm on a mission to react to all 177 house episodes on this channel. This will be episode 25 we've got on here. Let's see if I can get the diagnosis before house does as a doctor working in London. The cat's first. Now it's your turn, Lucy. What? Spicy! This patient has schizophrenia and a DVT that has dislodged into the lung. That is an accurate correlation as patients with schizophrenia are about twice as likely to get DVTs. We keep mental health patients under close monitoring for cardiovascular risk factors for that very reason. We also know that patients with mental health conditions live between 10 and 25 years less than the general population. That's called the mental health mortality gap. If it were that simple though, then there would be no point in the episode. So let's see what else they have in store for us. A 38 year old woman with no previous symptoms or history presents with deep vein thrombosis. How did she get it? Oh yeah. She's schizophrenic. Do we include schizophrenia in the differential for DVT? Well, the answer is no. What is House talking about? So first of all, you don't need to look for a specific cause of DVT if there isn't one apparent, since 30% of all DVTs are unprovoked, which means you never find a cause. If no cause is found, it just means the patient goes on blood thinners for longer, so it's six months rather than three months in a provoked DVT. Now, it seems like the son has also been helping her self-medicate with that good old treatment, vodka. The first doctor who saw her said that that could be the cause with the small quantities that she's been having. Now, you, you may be surprised by this, but it, small amounts of alcohol would actually reduce the risk of DVT since low to moderate consumption actually thins the blood. Strange, isn't it? Another strange one is that cigarette smoking actually improves ulcerative colitis. Before you book your Marlboro Field trip to Ibiza though, keep in mind that even if there are one or two benefits, the risks will almost always trump those benefits. Knowing them makes you fun at parties though. If it wasn't for Socrates, that raving, untreated schizophrenic, we wouldn't have the Socratic method, the best way of teaching everything. How much do you really drink? He likes crazy people. Likes the way they think. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, so we need to settle this Socrates was schizophrenic thing right now because that is a stretch. The origin of that is from Plato's account of Socrates' daemon. What Socrates claimed was a divine messenger that spoke to him and influenced his decision. That is very different to hearing voices in his head as it could have been a metaphor employed by Socrates or Plato to explain Socrates' intuition and intellect. Socrates loved to use imagery and folklore in his speeches, and that is evidenced throughout his work, especially when he describes the soul in the Phaedrus as a charioteer skimming the heavens. Remember also that Socrates lived in a time that gods were of immeasurable importance and history was tied to myth. It may be that he was tailoring his speeches to his audience. The schizophrenics tend to have disorganized thoughts, and Socrates used to be able to organize the thoughts of his students better than they could organize it themselves, unlikely to be the result of a patient suffering from schizophrenia. But here's a question for you smart people. What's the most common recreational drug that increases the risk of developing schizophrenia? Put in the comments below. Because of the tremors, she cuts herself. Something changed in the last two months. I'm thinking the amount of blood when she cut herself. Collect and send for clotting studies, PT, PTT, factor five, protein, CNS. You may be wondering what all those things are. And to understand that, you need to understand how the body forms clots. It's quite magical, really. The first thing that happens when a vessel is injured is that platelets temporarily start to seal the wound. This forms a very weak seal and it needs reinforcement quite quickly. That's when the coagulation cascade comes into play with the intrinsic and extrinsic pathways that both lead to the activation of something called factor 10A. Factor 10A in combination with factor 5 
then activate a molecule called thrombin, which is important in activating more platelets and fibrin that helps form a stronger platelet plug in arterial clot. That fibrin causes a mesh and sticks the platelets and red cells together like a net or a fence, which cross links to toughen it all up. Now prothrombin time or PT measures the strength of the extrinsic pathway. PTT usually activated partial thromboplastin time, which measures the intrinsic pathway. Protein C and protein S are two proteins that regulate the whole cascade. And when in deficiency, the clotting can go in overdrive or lead to hypercoagulable state. The reason why these tests are useful is they help us to understand which part of the clotting cascade is leading to thicker blood so that we can diagnose and give the right treatment. Take her off the psych meds, that way we'll know what's what on the physical side. Oh, that was dramatic. Vomiting up blood, medical emergency, needs treatment. You know that. What is more interesting is why she's got thin blood when she was clotting too much previously. She's taken off the psych medication. Maybe that was causing the thickened blood and now it's thin without it. But psych medication doesn't usually affect coagulability. The fact this episode is called the Socratic method though, which is to lead by questioning, makes me think that we need to wonder about what we assume is true rather than taking it for granted. The huge thing in this case is that she's schizophrenic and that she was on antipsychotics for it as treatment, but what if she didn't have schizophrenia in the first place and she was simply misdiagnosed? What else could have caused her auditory hallucinations? There could be rare occurrences of endocrine disorders that could lead to coagulopathy and psychosis like Cushing syndrome or hypothyroidism, lupus could be an autoimmune cause um, and lead to something like this. I definitely want to see blood test results with autoimmune and endocrine screens. And let's not forget to also stop the bleeding. Here's another question for you smart people. Which organ produces steroid hormones? Bonus points if you can tell me where it is. Everything was normal, except for prolonged PT time. The prolonged PT time makes me think she's got a vitamin K deficiency. Check out our place for ampicillin and diet, then ultrasound her liver. House, Cameron and Chase have three competing theories on what caused her prolonged PT. House thinks she's got vitamin K deficiency. Cameron thinks she could have had ampicillin interfering with her clotting pathway. And Chase seems to think that she's just got liver failure because of alcoholism and that's leading to her hypercoagulable and bleeding states. I think it's lupus and antiphospholipid antibodies. There are a few things here though. First of all, rather than ultrasounding the liver, you'd be able to see from the blood test fairly easily if there's liver failure. Another big giveaway is that she'd be yellow, but then where'd the fun be in that? Too easy. The other thing is that the patient had a prolonged prothrombin time. That means one of the factors two, seven or nine is deficient, not 10, because then the activated partial thromboplastin time would also be prolonged. These factors are affected because prothrombin time measures the extrinsic pathway of coagulation. Now the patient just had a major hemorrhage. We know that because we've just seen her vomit up blood. Since we know the deficiencies within the extrinsic pathway, we would replace those missing factors in two different ways. One is by giving prothrombin complex concentrate, which is a blood product and replaces the missing factors. And the second is by giving vitamin K, which helps the liver to regenerate the uh, lost factors itself. Since we're giving vitamin K anyway, we'll know if she's deficient by a simple test, whether it works. So checking her house for diet to see if she's having enough vitamin K doesn't seem like a great use of time, especially since you can only really develop a significant vitamin K deficiency with malabsorption or an extremely bad diet. And there would be signs of things like diarrhea, if that were the case, or poor weight gain. If House thinks that she has malabsorption, he could do a stool test to screen for inflammatory bowel disease and parasites and do a blood test to check for celiac disease. Um, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. House was right. Vitamin A and C, but no K. 
That's why your mom got sick. I'm 18, I should be able to take care of my mom. Wow, you mean the burger only diet isn't good for her? Reminds me of when I asked a patient whether they were having five a day and they asked me if a blueberry muffin counted. It doesn't. I also love how responsible the child is here, stepping up to look after his mom when she's unwell. Not everyone can stick with their family in that situation. When I was on palliative care, a man was diagnosed with cancer at the age of 72. He was slowly getting worse and his wife couldn't handle the responsibility and left him. She packed her bags and was fully ready to walk out, left the house and then ended up coming back. The only reason why she came back is because she was the main carer and if he ended up in a nursing home, she was worried that she would be forced to sell their house and pay for his nursing care. It's easy to judge people who do things like that, but after having spoken to her, she was really breaking down with the whole situation. Some people just weren't built for that kind of adversity. What can you do? Even in the hospice, she struggled to walk into his room and just used to wave at him from the door and would come get an update from us outside his room. No way vitamin K is the whole story. I can tell you how old someone really is. I was 15 last week. If you turn me in, I'll sue you. That's privileged information. It's not even your x-ray. <laughs> not his x-ray. Not his x-ray. How's this more convincing than a Girl Scout selling cookies? Although not quite as cute. Now, if you want the same influencing power as House, check out the channel membership. It gives you priority on suggesting what I react to next and helps me to make better reaction videos with your support. The first 10 to join get access to the Hall of Fame, which will leave your name on the channel forever. And there are only four spots left. So click join now to secure your place. We're gonna do a members only live stream when it's full, so you don't wanna miss that. The earlier you join, the earlier I can react to your suggestion. No one wins. Achievement. Pilot mass, cancer. I'm afraid I have some bad news from your ultrasound. You have cancer. Okay, this is a pretty big error as you absolutely cannot diagnose cancer from an ultrasound, you either need a piece of the tumor to look at under a microscope or a tumor marker from the blood called AFP or alpha fetoprotein to say whether it's cancer. You can have an indication from the ultrasound and say things like, it looks like this could be cancer, but we need to do further tests to confirm, but not straight to cancer like they have said here. I can see how all that uncertainty wouldn't make for great television though. So better to just get on with it. The real world is just too slow and boring. B, surgery to resect the tumor. 5.8 centimeters is past the surgical guidelines. You do it at 4.6. Tumors grow, they don't shrink. This one does. 95% ethanol. This may sound odd, as alcohol is what put the tumor there in the first place, but percutaneous ethanol was the first injection treatment for hepatocellular carcinoma which is what this is presumed to be, although technically we still have no idea. It could be something else still, but in terms of treatment, another option came out in the 90s with superior results to ethanol, which can shrink the tumor, called radiofrequency ablation with less complications and better outcomes. Let's see if they can cut this bad boy out now though. It also mm. may be that there's a cancer somewhere else and this is just a metastasis. Seems like they haven't done a CT scan to check if the, where the primary is elsewhere. It would be silly to just cut this out if it is a metastasis as the cancer would just come back and so you've got unnecessary risks. What you would need would be chemotherapy instead. It looks like the surgeon got it all but she's gonna have to have some chemotherapy. Trina Wyatt, Child Services, State of New Jersey. Lucas, you're gonna have to come with us right now. I mean, they can wait until his mom gets the chemo. Surely they can at least give him some right to come and visit rather than just taking him then and there. Social services only tends to do that and rehouse someone urgently if they're in acute emergency or dangerous situations, which it seems like this kid isn't. The only thing dangerous here is his diet. And I mean, come on, what else is a 15 year old gonna make themselves for food? I mean, come on, just give the kid some lettuce to put in his burgers and he should be good for a few days, then take him, not now. But how did they find out about this? Was it house? I don't know, that would be a bit too obvious. 
you called social services. Schizophrenics can make rational decisions. Self-sacrifice is not a symptom of schizophrenia. schizophrenia. What else presents with psych symptoms? What about that copper thing? What? Don't tell me this is Wilson's disease. Damn it, I got that it wasn't schizophrenia, but Wilson's actually presents with liver failure, usually which can cause bleeding, even though she had none of the symptoms of liver failure. Could also cause psychiatric symptoms. Occasionally, they do get rings of copper around the eye as well, called Ky Kaiserflasia rings too. It's gonna be Wins Wilson's disease, isn't it? It's a genetic disorder that disrupts a protein that clears excess copper from the liver. You can diagnose it by checking cellular plasmin levels as an indication and then definitively with a biopsy of the liver. It presents with liver problems, neurological problems, psychiatric problems. The treatment is chelation therapy, which binds excess copper using penicillamine or trientine. A few drugs and she could have her son back. Wow. Hi, Mrs. Palmero. Ready to go home? Almost. Mom? <sighs> She's not nearly as interesting anymore. <laughs> House always has to temper his good deeds with a modicum of brutal truth just to make sure he's not gone soft. I love it. Brilliant episode. I ignored the liver component for too long though, damn it. I didn't get this one, but did I get the next one? And it seems like you've got a house reaction deficiency, so go treat yourself and find out. Stay curious. Don't buy microwave burgers.